Good afternoon, founders, special guests, family and friends, teachers and administration, and graduates. We would like to welcome you to the second commencement ceremony of the Metropolitan School of Panama. Muy buenas tardes, fundadores, invitados especiales, familiares y amigos, profesores y administrativos, queridos graduandos. Les damos la más cordial bienvenida a la segunda ceremonia de graduación del Metropolitan School of Panama. We would like to introduce to you Señor Moisés Ramírez, Supervisor Nacional de Educación Particular en representación del Ministerio de Educación. Mrs. Monique Flickinger, Head of School. Señora Indira Acosta de Licor, Directora Académica. And Mr. Richard Hengelbrock, Secondary School Principal. Invitamos a la directora del colegio, Monique Flickinger, quien nos dará unas palabras. Thank you, Phil and Yarnasa, for leading our ceremonies here today, and also for your dedication in teaching and leadership at our school. So welcome, families, graduates, staff. What an amazing event we get to share today. Um, the reality we get to share today is because of the actions of these students sitting here in front of us and a group of families who envision a special type of school. Um, these families dream that a school would educate and nurture students and they would have excellent academic pre preparation and that students would be happy in their learning environment and I do believe they're happy. So six years later, we're very happy to see our second group of graduates up here today. Each Monday, we start our week by singing our Met, our Met Anthem. And the words remind us how we will act, what we can become, and that our goals can become a reality. It's only fitting that in our last official time together that we should once again remember our words to our anthem. So we would like to start this celebration with our school anthem, and we're very pleased to have our drama teachers, Leonte Gordenia and Odette Versailles. They could come out, and they're going to be singing our school anthem. So seniors, I hope you always remember the words that you say each Monday as you begin your next journey.
that was amazing. And we have, come on out guys, we have a little gift for you that the kids wanted to recognize your amazing singing voices and also everything that you do in this world. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Um, every time I have the opportunity to sing that song, it reminds me um, of our journey together and what we can become, and that we truly can build a better world. So next up, Mr. Jorge Conte, if you could come up and present a message from our founders, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear graduates. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, profesor Moisés Ramírez. En representación del Ministerio de Educación, muchísimas gracias por estar aquí un sábado en la tarde, aquí con nosotros acompañándonos en este muy importante evento y sobre todo para entregarle ese diploma a estos muchachos y muchachas que tanto se lo merecen. Así que gracias por estar aquí, profesor eh, Moisés. This is indeed a very exciting afternoon. We are here celebrating a big and important milestone. Thanks mainly to your effort and your perseverance. We were very excited last year with our friends graduation, but this one is also feeling very, very good. You have been a special group that has demonstrated the net spirit at its best. We congratulate you and your parents, of course, for achievements and for what is to come. This is now the beginning of your journey, new paths, a journey of which you are now pretty much in control. Be good, think about the other. Whatever you do, do it with passion. And above all that, enjoy what you do. Have clear objectives and find ways to reach them. These, I believe, are the recipe for success. And remember, success is not necessarily having endless material possessions or tons of money. Success is about being happy with yourself and sharing that happiness. Talking about success and objectives, our main objective at MED, our passion, is to help students achieve success in life. And to do so while being principal, conscientious citizens, fully engaged with the world that surrounds them, and you class of 2017 are a fine example of that. This year, school had pivotal achievements the land purchase for a new campus, and maybe more important, being accredited by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, NIAS. For having achieved this demanding task, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate our academic and administrative teams at the Met, and I ask you for a big round of applause, please. As Nias expressed to us, and I quote, we saw in the Met leadership a team and a strong commitment with our school, mission and vision, clearly visible in your culture. Nias also commended us for in such a short time implementing strong PYP, NYP, and DP programs, giving all of our students a robust educational framework. We are resolute in continuing work to work with the same and even greater enthusiasm, always committed in finding new ways, whatever that might be, to improve and strengthen our education for a well-being, for the well-being and success of all of our med students. As our head of school, Mrs. Monique once wrote, 
Preparing students for the 21st century is a complex and challenging educational endeavor. Our students must think critically, collaborate productively, possess initiative, adaptability, analyze information, and communicate them effectively. Class of 2017, more than ever, be confident. Become accomplished and articulate leaders. Ask the right questions and identify and solve those problems that you will find for sure in your path. So don't be afraid. After this celebration is over, I ask you a big favor. Go to your parents and hold them. Okay? Listen to them for they are wise. Believe it or not, they are. <laughs> it will serve you well. As you grow, you will come to appreciate this more and more and more. We know you're smart and well prepared to conquer your dreams. Go. Go ahead. Do it right. Do it with passion. And remember, the man is always your second home. Come back and visit many times over. Seeing you will lift our spirit. Good luck and all the best. Buenas tardes a todos y todas. En primera instancia me excusan por no expresar el discurso en inglés y espero que lleguen estas palabras. Dice así, en nombre de su excelencia Marcela Paredes de Vázquez, Ministra de Educación y de la licenciada Profesora Vidal Castillo, Directora Nacional de Educación Particular, tengo el honor hoy de acompañarles en este momento tan, pero tan especial. No solo para cada uno de ustedes, queridos Teradorandos, sino también para sus padres, sus abuelos, sus familiares y todas las personas que lo han apoyado para llegar a este punto. Y sobre todo, con mucho cariño, al personal del Colegio Metropolitan School of Panamá, el cual le pido que le den un merecido aplauso a todos los docentes. Ustedes, estimados graduandos, Aprovechen para bien esta oportunidad y hagamos de esta sociedad un mundo más placentero para todos, lo cual se consolida más hacia la riqueza del conocimiento, la inteligencia y el estudio. Sigan adelante. Ustedes son el porvenir del futuro. No olviden que el recurso más preciado que cada hombre y mujer tienen es para sí la educación. Al salir de aquí tendrán la puerta abierta a un mundo lleno de oportunidades, un mundo prácticamente sin fronteras en materia profesional. Dependerá de cada uno de ustedes encontrar la felicidad como seres humanos y el éxito profesional. 
y para eso requiere de disciplina, eficacia, fidelidad, eficiencia, responsabilidad, que le dediquen a su proyecto y todo con un, una fuerte fe y la perseverancia de que lo que hacen tienen que lograrlo. Logren una sociedad que no solo requiere profesionales idóneos, sino gente comprometida con cada cosa que hace. Repito, jóvenes graduando, enormemente, pero de dentro del corazón se les felicita por el esfuerzo que han hecho. Pero sigan luchando por sus sueños, sean hombres y mujeres de bien, quieran a sus padres, practiquen los valores básicos, honestidad, sinceridad y fidelidad. Quiero también a sus padres, gracias por haber apoyado a sus hijos trabajando en conjunto con el Centro Escolar Metropolitan School por hacer realidad el sueño de cada joven estudiante graduado. A Mrs. Monique Frinkler, del, directora del Centro Educativo, siga apoyando a la educación porque el Ministerio de Educación no lo tiene para todo y tenemos un brazo fuerte que descansa en la educación particular gracias por apoyarnos y gracias también a todos los que están aquí presentes y los que no están presentes sigamos apoyando a esta juventud para que siga adelante solamente han llegado un escalón ¿Quién sucede en el futuro? Un ingeniero, un arquitecto, un autonauta, una viajera de, de Almosa. ¿Qué es lo que depara? Pero todo depende, no solamente de ustedes, queridos graduados, depende del apoyo que le den los padres. Y acuérdense lo, lo más fundamental. Cuando salgan a la sociedad, sientan con orgullo de decir... Yo soy egresado de Metro por esta escuela. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias al profesor Moisés Ramírez por sus palabras. We would like to now introduce two teachers who were selected by the 12th grade to deliver the faculty address to our second generation of students. Dos profesores fueron escogidos por los estudiantes graduandos para ofrecerles un mensaje a nuestra segunda generación de estudiantes. Recibamos a Daisy Barrios and Dylan Carter. As many as, as many of you know, I have a newborn baby daughter at home, so I just want you to take that into consideration that I've been practicing this speech at home. So two things to remember. Baby daughter practicing at home. <laughs> Good evening, parents, graduates, and esteemed guests. In all seriousness, I have a theme of my speech tonight. And the theme of my speech is change and agency. Change. To our graduates, you are all agents of change. We have changed so much together. When I first arrived here four years ago, you were just kids and I was barely an adult. Now, all of you are adults and I have a kid. We have changed so much. You are agents of change. I'd like to take a second to recognize some of the educators that were involved in this change. You must know that they taught you more than just skills and content. Mastery, his, master history teachers taught you more than just history is about the past. 
They taught you about how to study history to learn how we got to the present. Strong math teachers didn't just tell you about numbers, they taught you how to solve problems from multiple perspectives. Cast coordinators didn't just count up your cast hours, they introduced you to the humility of service and the honor of giving back. Inspiring language aid teachers, both English and Spanish, didn't just teach you how to, how to write a persuasive essay. They taught you how to persuade the UN General Assembly to act on a matter of utmost urgency. Strong geography teachers did not just instruct you about the earth that we live on. They taught you how to use colored pencils properly. <laughs> Your science teachers did not just instruct you about biology, physics, and environmental systems. They gave you the gifts of using reason and applying logic to find solutions to our problems. Your counselors didn't just counsel you. They showed you the courage that you possessed within. Your principals did not just discipline you. They demonstrated leadership and showed you how to, cha to create change through diplomacy. Language B teachers did not just instruct you to analyze English and Spanish as a second language. They taught you empathy. And profound art teachers didn't just teach you how to shade, design, paint, dance, and sculpt. They taught you how to bear your soul to the universe and create. Remember, you are agents of change. <clears throat> Many of you have done a quest for me before in the past. Not a quiz or a test, because on a quest you might see a dragon or discover new lands. You won't do that on a quiz. But I have one more quest for you, and this is the most important, and that is choosing what you will study. Some of you will figure this out right away, some of you will take a bit longer. But this is very important, because it will set you in motion to become a professional. When choosing your classes, and thus your profession, I want you to ask yourself this question. What is the change in the world I want to be part of? Many of you will choose some of the more traditional fields and study become doctors, lawyers, and engineers. Remember, your agents of change. If you study to become a doctor, think about studying development and become courageous enough to work with Doctors Without Borders. If you become a, law a lawyer, think about studying environmental law to defend those who are voiceless. If you want to become an engineer, Learn how to engineer products that can contribute to society in a positive manner, instead of designing planned obsolescence. You engineers should team up with those of you who are studying business and figure out how to market these products and make a profit out of sustainability. You are agents of change. Some of you will not go the traditional route. Some of you will study political science and international relations. Please do. Who knows? One of you up here might be the first democratically elected female president of the United States, Colombia, or Venezuela. Some will go on to study journalism. Please learn how to ask the hard questions, to challenge our leaders to be accountable, and to work within the confines of truth. And some of you will go on to study art and design. Please do so. The world needs you. And this, I believe, is a truly more challenging endeavor than those studying medicine, if not only because those studying medicine will have a job at the end of their process. <laughs> whatever you choose to study, whatever you choose to be in life, please remember, you are agents of change. Bienvenidos todos, invitados de honor, buro de directores, mesa directiva, padres de familia, abuelos, tíos, familiares, clase del 2017. Welcome, everyone. It is a privilege for me to be here today and to have the opportunity to address this wonderful group of students. I would like, I would like to start with an anecdote that dates back to grade 10 when we were the purple and the orange groups. One of our goals was to enhance our English, me included. And as a reward for using English, 
we would get a trip to the plaza. On our first trip to the plaza, that day, it is still very fresh in my mind. When we arrived at the plaza, and to my pleasant surprise, the group arranged a large table against all laws at the plaza. We sat all together, they sat together, they invited me to join them. Among laughter, anecdotes, jokes, I learned a lot of things from this group. Aprendí muchas cosas de ese grupo entre risas, anécdotas y chistes. Aprendí que los une la pasión, la pasión por el deporte, los lazos de amistad, la determinación por luchar por lo justo, la valentía de salir de su área de confort, enfrentar nuevos retos y estar presente donde pueden hacer la diferencia. Mr. Carter has just invited you all to become agents of change. In order for you to become an agent of change, you have to be a leader. I believe that inside each and every one of you, there is a leader. A, a leader that you need to continue to nurture. I am going to quote Peter Bourgeois on his book, The Key to Great Leadership. And I'm going to give each and every one of you some tips on how to continue to nourish the leader that lives inside of you. Juan Camilo, Giselle, Jose Ernesto, Joshua, Jose Andres, enthusiasm is a key to success. Successful leaders are enthusiastic about everything they do. Remember, to always end the project with the same enthusiasm that you started it. Carlos, Max, Marcos, Andres, commitment. Successful people give everything they have to their goals. Isaac, Emilia, Manuela, Dominic, Discipline. Discipline is the opportunity to teach, to teach someone the things that are important. Steph, Nick, Hector, Valentina, exemplary. Lead by example. What you do is so loud that it's very difficult to hear what you say. Mariana, Michael, Pierre, Maria, steady moods. You will be expected to lead your team through many storms and they will look up to you and they need to feel the confidence that it was just a small turbulence. Mafe, Julio, Annie, Andrea, mistakes. Great leaders make many mistakes. But they also learn from those mistakes and they make sure they don't repeat them. Amia, Mateo, Pamela, Jennifer, self discipline. Self discipline guides your life. Do not push the snooze button. There is someone out there waiting for you to guide them. Those around you need to know that they can count on you. Juanes, Gloria, Catherine, Mariam. Pressure. Pressure is a privilege. Hold it up. Keep it together. Pressure is a privilege for those who have earned it. Class of 2017. Jóvenes. Hoy es el inicio de una nueva etapa de sus vidas. Una etapa donde ustedes marcarán al ritmo que quieren bailar. Donde decidirán qué cánticos entonar y por qué vale la pena luchar. You are all great teachers. Always remember your roots. Todas las noches sueñen con su éxito y levántense temprano al día siguiente a trabajar arduamente para hacer ese sueño realidad. Y por último, recuerden prender la llama donde quiera que van. Class of 2017, ustedes han inspirado, ustedes son nuestra mejor inspiración. Muchas gracias y congratulations.
with a history teacher who's jealous of our ability to play. <laughs> On behalf of the board of directors, en representación de la junta directiva, invitamos al señor Jorge Conte.
for those pieces of advice that I was given that night, those tips meant to illuminate my path through the years to come, helpful tips that I could pass on to you tonight. Truth be told, I don't remember any. <laughs> I was unable to recall any recommendation, any piece of advice that has guided me through the years that have followed. To be frank, I don't remember the speech or shamefully even the speaker. I thought of calling my mother, who, like your parents tonight here, was profoundly attentive of the ceremony to see if she could help me remember anything about that night. But immediately, I realized that was not a good idea. After all, she had had to endure another four high school ceremonies, as we are four brothers and one sister, plus an equal number of college commencement speeches. I also realized that since she turns 80 this year, it would have been a very unfortunate and unfair question to ask. It is true that 37, 37, years, ago, 37, 37 years have elapsed since that night at the gym of the Colegio La Salle, where a hundred of us received our high school certificates from Brother Riloa and the Vice Minister of Education. But was the speech really so irrelevant or boring that I have no recollection? So I stand before you tonight terrified about what to say in order to avoid becoming to you as irrelevant as my speaker was to me. <laughs> and so here comes the first piece of advice. Kiss. K-I-S, in your life, always try to keep it simple. Learn to keep it simple, get to the point if you want to be effective. The second and most important single piece of advice, cherish and rely on the value of critical thinking. The whole point of getting a higher education, of having the privilege of attending a top high school and getting admitted to world-class colleges and universities, is to develop a critical way of thinking, to develop a critical mind. It is a priceless asset and unfortunately, is still reserved, reserved for too few people in the world. Critical thinking is a tool, a discipline, a daily exercise that will help you solve many problems as you face a world full of myths, propaganda, fake idols, and wasted ideologies. Analyze and evaluate information gathered from observation, from experience, from scientific reasoning, based on universal intellectual values, such as clarity, precision, consistency, relevancy, sound evidence, historical reading, and fairness. Everyone is subject to episodes of irrational thought. As humans, of course, besides rationality, we are also influenced by passion, by love, and by friendship. But learn to distinguish one from another. If you do, you may avoid self-delusion and become a fair-minded person one who is humble, empathic, empathic, and able to contribute to a more civilized and less dangerous society.
society. Critical thinking, as you grow older, and hopefully wiser, will also help you to realize that perfection is a utopia, and thus allow, allow you to have more compassion for yourself as well as for others. Third, run away from pessimism. The world is full of prophets of doom. I am alarmed by the constant cries of leaders from all walks of life, telling us that the world is going to the worst crisis in history. It's a constant alarm ringing against what which is new, that which is different or innovative. Of course, there are many problems in the world and in our communities which are valid cause for concern. Where pollution and climate change, for example, are issues that demand solutions, as do terrible maladies and dictatorships, such as the present struggle of our brothers in Venezuela chose. But the world is far from collapsing. In fact, as Mario Vargas Llosa declared some years ago, taking into account all that is not going well in the world, humanity never had a better moment. Never before the world has had better, better tools to overcome the great demons of history, hunger, disease, ignorance, and abuse. Just check the facts. Review history and compare it. Humans are by far better off today than in any other period in history. Life expectancy, for example, which in the 19th century was 35 years, rose to 57 years in the 20th century. Now, it is 75 years on average, and in Panama, it's 78. In other words, people are living twice as long as did their great-grandfathers. We are living longer and better. Health, literacy, basic education, all fundamental aspects of life have improved tremendously. It is estimated that in 1820, 94 out of 100 people on Earth were living in extreme poverty. Only 6 out of 100 were well off. Today, 10 out of 100 people are still living in extreme poverty. But 9 out of 100 people now live above the poverty line. Thus, the immense majority is able to eat and find basic living conditions. The same goes for literacy and basic education. In 1820, 88% of the world's population was illiterate. Today, 85% of the world can read and write. In Panama, for example, when we separated from Colombia in 1903, it was estimated that more than 80% of the population was illiterate. The first real census conducted in 1923 showed that 70% of the population of Panama was still illiterate. In 1934, illiteracy had been cut in half, and today, the illiteracy rate in Panama is 4%. We have seen improvements not only in health or income, but in quality of life factors such as freedom, democracy, and equality. In 1900, 
Only 10 out of 100 people live under democratic rule in the world. Democracy has still a long way to go, but gay gains are stunning. By 2015, for the first time in history, 56% of the world population live under some form of democratic rule. The oppression of women for centuries by fathers, husbands, religious orders, and political establishment, an oppression that was still omnipresent during the first decades of the 20th century, is being dismantled at constant speed in most of the Western Hemisphere and lately in vast territories of Asia. Again, there's still much to do to fight exclusion, prejudice, poverty, and inequality, but advances are real. Make no mistake, we live in the historical period that has seen less wars and violence than ever before, when poverty has diminished considerably. The world's population is living longer and better than ever before, with less suffering and better income and education. It is a world that in general is more democratic and a bit less unjust. Do not underestimate the achievements of humankind in science, research, and technology nor the accumulated effort of so many to create a more tolerant, inclusive, and peaceful society of nations. Don't fear progress. On a lesser note of pessimism, each one of you has probably been warned on a daily basis about how bad it is to be always connected to your smartphones, about how you don't read as much as in the past, and about how you do not interact with others. Warn that families are in disarray and so that societies have lost their traditional values. All those affirmations carry a dose of fatality. They are built on false premises. Young people are only interacting in a different way, different from that which we have grown accustomed. It is not bad. It is just a different way of communicating, of acting and interacting. Humanity has evolved many times, modifying the way we live, believe, and interact, it is not just better or worse, it is just different. Parents, don't be concerned. I have no doubt that this generation will be just fine and that your children will find love, form families, and be as happy in the era of the small smartphones as we were with color TVs, telephones, and landlines. Written accounts in England, for example, published, published when the telephones were introduced for the first time to households, attest to the concerns of so many thinkers and leading authors of the day about the dangers of that invention. invention. They painted a gloomy scenario because they feared that people Connecting their voices by cable lines would lose all social capabilities. It was supposed to be the end of a civilized society where courtesy visits and personal contacts were to be lost forever. And that's a quote. A similar reaction took place the previous century in Paris when glassmakers were finally able to produce mirrors on a large format and people for the first 
time in their life got a glimpse of themselves on a lead-covered side glass, Parisians were able not only for the first time to see an accurate and reliable image of themselves, but to buy the extremely expensive novelty and hang it on the walls of their homes. What was then a luxurious article was immediately demonized as an artifact of vanity, of self-indulgence, and a reason for the decadence of society, an artifact for the promotion of sin. Why do I tell you to run away from pessimism? Because every seller of fatality that I have ever encountered has a hidden agenda behind him. Political agendas and selling fatality and chaos have influenced voters to a point that whole political systems have been overthrown on shaky premises and with people ending up with much worse political systems than those they denounced before. The same happens with religious fanatics and extremists, trying to persuade us that blasphemy, immorality, and depravity are about to destroy the world. However, history teaches us otherwise, revealing a sad and endless list of casualties and blood spilled by religious imposition and intolerance. Again, this is just not true. With all its problems, with all its injustice and unfairness, the world today is better off in quantitative and qualitative terms than in any other time in history. Four, participate in public life. Unless we are able to colonize other planets, there is no way you will live isolated on planet Earth. We have a common house and a common destiny. We have communities and governments, cherished democracy. Humanity paid a high price to attain it, and you are privileged to live in that half of the world that enjoys its liberties and benefits. Don't take democracy for granted. Remember, when you don't vote, others are deciding for you. Whatever you do or you do not cast a vote, someone is going to get elected. It would be better if the good guys got elected. It, it would be even better if you prepare yourself to be among those good guys. Fifth and final, photocopy Mahatma Gandhi's seven social sins. And after reading it one more time, set it loose among your papers so it can surface every couple of years among your lost files. For Gandhi, social sins in our world are politics without principles, worship without sacrifice, wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, and science without humanity. Dear graduates, you are about to depart in the pursuit of your dreams. As you start, start down the path to your future, your future, you leave behind not only your teachers and friends, but also a meaningful place, unique in history. Some of your guests this evening may not be aware of the origins of these very grounds and of the transformation that took place here. The former Fort Clayton operated 
for over 80 years where we stand today. Its main section was built with the film from the diggings of the canal. Fort Clayton was one of the largest military bases in the canal zone, the headquarters of the U.S. Army in Panama. The base remained active until 1999, when it was closed pursuant to the Panama Canal Treaties. Around the time you were born, these lands and buildings were destined for warfare. A decade earlier, there was a 20-year-old military dictatorship in Panama, just beyond the, beyond the fences that divided Panama and the Canal Zone. On January 1, 2000, Fundación Ciudad del Saber received the keys to the just vacated orders with a mandate to create a center devoted to the promotion of knowledge, peace, and research, which would be open to the world. By then, the Republic of Panama had returned to civilian and democratic rule and all 14 American bases in its territory has been closed. It would be wonderful if more military bases around the world were converted into schools and research centers. You are now custodians of that legacy and appointed ambassadors with a mission. Go forth and conquer. Good evening. It's been an honor to be chosen as a student speaker from this remarkable graduating class of 2017. I would like to take the chance to thank all the teachers, administrators, families, and friends where each and every one of you contributed to our success over, over the past years living within the Met community. Without you, we wouldn't be here today standing on this stage. Whether we realize it or not, all of these groups of people played a part in our success throughout our high school experience. Thank you parents and families for encouraging us to give out our best in any given schoolwork or activity, and for always being there next to us as moral support. Thank you teachers for guiding and sharing wisdom with us and we are very sorry for the many times where we left you very stressed, or perhaps made you rethink whether you wanted to quit work or not. But from all of this, I think that our relationship with each other grew stronger. I am, sh I, I am sure that without this group of teachers sitting right, ne right next to me, uh, we wouldn't have enjoyed high school as much as we did. And of course, we will all miss Mr. Hayes' constant emails threatening us that we will fail the diploma program. 
But with this, I can say that everyone has developed a love-hate relationship with Mr. Hayes. But we all know that this made us work harder, faster, to get our work done at time. Lastly, but certainly not the least, I want to thank all of our friends, which not only pushed us to work to our best efforts, but reminded each and every one of us of what we're capable for. Your friends are more than just someone you have a bond with. They are your entertainment throughout high school, a motivation and a reason why you want to come back every day. These people made us move forward various steps closer to our graduation day. For over the past, for over the past two years, we have been pushing ourselves not only with the demands of the diploma program, but with the demands over our future. Being able to know in what country you want to study in or in what field you want to explore, which will become our first big steps into the real world. At the moment, we won't perhaps notice how important it is for us to graduate high school. But in about 10 years from now, we could remember this moment as just, as just a memory from the past. School is an experience every, every kid should have the opportunity to have, as it has defined me and, that, and as it has shaped all of us. What might separate our experiences depends on what we chose to join in our school. Like the students who went to the debate club, going to international debate conferences, or the Cayuco team practicing every week in Gamboa with the national uh, winning coaches Jay and Lori, or the rugby team having the chance to travel to Colombia for their competition, or even Operation Smile, where, sent, where they send many men volunteers to attend their local missions. All of these experiences and hundreds of more have shaped us all and have set us apart from one another. Although we do share common memories with each other, like the swimming gala, making boats out of cardboard, preparing for mocks and exams together, or even, or even the senior skip day. These memories have marked us as a group, and once we leave the stage, our high school memories stay, and we start deciding how we want to define ourselves from now on. Many of, many of us will be attending college in the fall, where it becomes an opportunity for us to gain experience and work leading up towards our future goals. Today, high school will officially end, and for many of, of us, life is just beginning. From now on, we are no longer high school seniors, but instead, we are high school graduates. With this, I would like to congratulate the class of 2017 on finally graduating high school and to wish them all good luck on their future lives. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for the speech. Um, the, the emails don't stop after you graduate. Just so. <laughs> okay, we'll now watch a short video that the seniors have created for this occasion. En estos momentos veremos un video preparado